You know, what's interesting is that part of the reason why I started recording these devotionals that I call evotionals is that there's the idea out there or the premise that a lot of times people that call themselves Christians act like or do something outside of communicating with God, that they just pretend like God's there or they contend that somehow from a Sunday experience to a Saturday week, you know, they, they aren't really connecting or talking to or having a relationship with God, that somehow it's more of a religion with, with just faith involved and no real substance to it. And my reaction to that is, no. <laughs> if it is, then the person that's portraying it is missing something because you see, Jesus had a personal relationship. He didn't have a religion about God. He had a communication with the Father. And God the Father communicated with God the Son. In other words, Jesus and the Father communicated and talked to each other. And they even recorded it for us, some of their conversations that they had. And that's what Christianity is. And then the same thing happened with when Jesus said that he would leave and he would send another comforter, that he would be there to comfort us as well as to communicate with us, is that we are given the Holy Spirit inside so we can communicate with God the Father and with the Son. And so there is a direct relationship that we need to have in communication. It's not simply a religion of grace and mercy that you know we're forgiven now so we can do our own thing. But it's meant to be an ongoing relationship of daily experience going through the storms of life and the blessings of life and the encouragement through life by having a dynamic life that would be changed obviously by seeing that God is alive in that person and that God is working through that person and God is working in that person and to that person to not just change them but to be alive revealing God the Father. And that's what Jesus was showing us by his life, by his words, by his example, and by what he did. And so, a lot of times when people get this idea that, you know, somehow Christians say a prayer and run off and go do their own thing, I think they're looking at the wrong Christians, you know. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus and you don't communicate with God directly and you don't have an ongoing developing relationship where you know him more intimately than you ever knew him before that you're missing out on what it's all about it's not about doing your own thing it's finding out who god is so you know maybe some people are caught up in the religion of christianity and maybe they are religious christians but there is something more something real and something alive and that's jesus in us that's emmanuel god in us who is both to do and to will of his good pleasure through us and for us so that we could be an example of who God is living inside of a person and what he can do as he reveals himself in this world as well as when we die and we go to be with him in heaven. In daily light, whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was also able to perform. The children of Judah prevailed because they relied upon the Lord God of their fathers. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fail, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, blessed is the man that trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want of them that fear him. Often, in trusting in the Lord, that means that we have to ask God what he wants to do because it's not always just us doing our own thing and running off and saying, oh, well, God bless my day and then go and do your way, you know, but rather it is asking God in the daily decisions as you go along with God, how personal and real is he to you 
by how obvious you are doing what he wants you to do or doing what you think you ought to do. Because that's where the, the sticky point is, the rubber meets the road, where people can determine whether or not you're real or you're just religious. Because that's what people want to see, is, is God real? And they can only determine that sometimes by you. So are you trusting in the Lord today? Are you revealing the real God? Not the real Christian, but the real God who's alive and well. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makes me to dwell in safety. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. Even as a hand gathers her chickens under her wings, he will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, that he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. The darkness hides not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. He that spared not his son, but delivered him up for, his, for us all, how shall he not him also freely give us all things? You are Christ, and Christ is God's, and I will trust and not be afraid. Irregardless of the storms of life that Jesus said he would bring us through and protect us from, God said he would bring us to himself no matter what life may bring to us or the circumstances happen around us that we can trust in him with all of our life and that there would be no fear for what man may do, nature may do, the world may do or that our own fears may do because God will bring us near to him and in his presence we find there is no fear. There's only that realization that God our God is alive and moving and doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves and even those things that we can do for ourselves that he would rather we let him do at times when he tells us he is our salvation not we ourselves so sometimes let God do it his way and choose not to go your way because it's always better if it's done in the way that he wants it done than for you to be in the way from him doing what he wants to do today.